Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this morning's meditation is the Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 11. And dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what does it mean to be a Christian? If you look to the media for that kind of an answer, the media might say that, that Christians are people who tend to be judgmental. And they follow teachings and rules that are written in a book written centuries ago to a different people. If you ask a non-Christian, you might get all sorts of different kinds of responses. Uh, but they may talk about things that Christians are not supposed to do. Depending on the branch of Christianity they've been in contact with, they may say Christians don't, uh, they don't drink, they don't dance, or they don't smoke, or they don't have abortions, or they don't let people marry who they want. And they don't love people who do those things. You may get those responses. You may get completely other responses. Uh, maybe even within the church, not just Trinity, but within the Christian church, you ask people, what does it mean to be a Christian? They may say uh, that being a Christian means you live the right way, you do the right things, you, you live according to all the rules and teachings of Jesus. And truth be told, there are a lot of rules and teachings of Jesus. There's a lot of things that we need to do and we need to follow as Christians. In fact, the Bible has complete books about all those different rules. You think of the Ten Commandments, the book of Leviticus, and all the things God's people were called to do. You think of Jesus teaching to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, to love your neighbor as yourself. We know those things. We know those rules. We know we are to live and follow those teachings. But we also know the truth that we can't do it. That's our epistle reading for today. In Romans chapter 7. Paul knows all the things that God calls him to do, the teachings, the laws, the commands that he is to follow as God's child. And what does he say? I can't do it. That's what he says at the end of verse 18 into verse 19 of, of the epistle reading in Romans 7. Paul says, for I have the desire to do what is right. He's saying, I want to follow those laws. I want to follow those teachings. And yet he says, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. That's the struggle. We can't live up to all those rules and teachings and commands of God. We don't have that ability to live that way. So how do you handle the problem? What do we do when we know we can't live up to all those commands and expectations? Sometimes what we do is we pretend. We pretend that we have it together. We pretend that we're able to do what God requires of us. And yet we know the truth. We can't do it. In my office, on one of the shelves, I have this book. Now, pastors have lots of books. You see it in pastor's office. You can see it in my office. And many of those books talk about Talk about books of the Bible, maybe some Bible studies. Maybe there's even, even some applications of different teachings and how, how that's applied to life and helping people through different struggles. But this book is not about a book of the Bible or a Bible study. 
No, this book is a novel. It's written by Susan Howitch, and it's called Glittering Images. This book was a required textbook in one of my pastoral theology classes at the seminary. And what's in this book, it, it talks about a man, a pastor. He goes by Dr. Charles Ainsworth. He was a pastor in the Church of England in the 30s. He was a pastor whose wife had died. He struggled in the ministry, and yet he enjoyed the things of life. He enjoyed smoking cigarettes and drinking whiskey, things that weren't really approved within the Church of England. And he, and he meets with his archbishop, and he opens up the windows for 24 hours beforehand to get all the smoke out of his house. And it talks about his struggle. His struggle of being a pastor and trying to put on this image of having it all together. The struggle of him enjoying the sinful things of this world, not just drinking and smoking, but the company of a woman that he, he meets as he goes and visits another pastor. Now he spends the week with her. And the struggle to write a sermon. And the reason that uh, the professor had us read this book in our pastoral theology class was this. He said, gentlemen, you're setting out to be pastors. And if you think that you are going to be right and perfect and people will see you as holy all the time, you're going to be exhausted. And it's not true. You won't be perfect and you won't be holy. So be real with your people. Talk about your struggles. Relate with them where they are. Walk with them in the struggle and battle of sin. There's nothing you have to hide. In essence, he was saying you don't have to pretend. He said, we don't need to share your, your faults in the pulpit every Sunday, but you're real with your people. How real are you? We know the teachings that God has in his word. We know the commands that he wants us to live by. And we know we can't do it. But sometimes don't we like to pretend? We like to pretend that we are someone who has it all together. We are someone who's able to follow this word of Jesus. And so we work very hard at showing people how good we, we are. We wear ourselves out trying to do all the right things and keeping up all the right appearances, to use the title of that book, to have that glittering image of having it together and doing what's right and following Jesus. And how much work is that for us? We know our sinful habits. We know the truth that we don't always and we can't always follow God's word no matter how hard we try. We fall into that sin and trap of temptation. We fall into sin and what do we say? This time I'm going to get it right. This time I am determined. I'm not going to do that again. And we might get it right. For what? 10? 20? 30 seconds? And we fall into that trap, don't we? And we wear ourselves out. And we get tired of the burden, the struggle. You know, in preparation for this sermon, I came across a, a study, an illustration that I think fits with what's being talked about in our text. And it's about a test that some psychologists were doing in the 70s. 
And these psychologists were studying different learning scenarios and traits of people, and to help them with it, they began by using laboratory rats. And what they did is they had these, these rats in a cage, and they were moving freely, and then, and then these, these researchers decided to add electricity to the bottom of parts of this cage. And if the rats would go on that part of the cage, they'd receive a shock. Well, that's exactly what happened, and those rats learned to avoid wherever that electricity was. They'd jump around it or move a, over it, but they wouldn't touch it. And then those researchers decided, I wonder what happens if we would we'd put electricity on the whole part of the cage, the whole bottom of it, and that's exactly what they did. And those two rats initially tried to jump from place to place to, to avoid that little electrical shock, and, and they quickly realized that their work and their ability to avoid being shocked was, was futile. What those rats did is they just ended up sitting down right where they were on the bottom of the cage and began to endure that shock. And they stopped trying to move around and avoid it, even when different parts of the cage were released from the electricity and there was avenues to escape from it. Those rats just stayed put. And I think that connects with us as people in a way. You ever faced a burden and a struggle in life? And you try different things to avoid it. You try to do different things to solve it. And you find that your work and your energy and the options and the things you know what to do just seem to be futile. And no matter how many try times you try again and again and again and again, everything ends up in failure. And we get tired of trying. We get tired of dealing with the burdens of sin. We get tired of having to endure the struggles because we don't have the answer. We settle down. We just endure. We get frustrated. We get annoyed. We get weary. We get tired of it. To that reality, to that weariness, to those times in our life when we are just tired of trying to do things right or even put up with the burdens, Jesus speaks. He speaks to your reality. And he says these words. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Jesus is the one who comes to us who are tired, who are weary, who are burdened by sin. And he says, I will give you rest. rest. Doesn't that sound nice? <laughs> rest from all of the work. Rest from all of the work of having to keep God's commands and his rules and weighing down or being weighed down with all of the guilt when we realize we can't do it. When we fall short of all of those rules, Jesus is the one who comes to you and says, Come. Come to me and I will give you rest. 
you don't have to work so hard. I am the one who has followed God's rules. I am the one who has fulfilled God's law. You don't have to work and wear yourself out. Come, rest in me. Jesus is the one who invites us to come and rest in him. When we see how all of our best efforts still fall short of God's word and his desire for our lives, Jesus says, rest in me. Your sin and your burdens, the challenges in your life, Jesus says, I take care of them. I bring you healing. It is Jesus who has picked up your burden, your sin, the sin of the whole world. And he carried that weight of sin to the cross of Calvary. And there on the cross of Calvary, Jesus died for you that you may be forgiven. That you may have life in his name. That you may find rest for your life, for your body here on earth in Jesus. Who tells us we don't have to work that hard or trying to keep up images and acting like we have it all together. No, Jesus says, rest in me. Knowing that your sin has been died for. Through your Savior, Jesus. Which really lifts the burden, doesn't it? We don't have to pretend anymore. We don't have to keep up the image that we have it all together. Or that we know all of Scripture. No, we can be real with each other. We can share our hurts and our burdens with brothers and sisters in Christ because we know that we all struggle with the same sin. We all have our burdens. And we all have our challenges. And we all know the Savior who invites us to come and rest in Him. And so we encourage each other. We support each other. We pray for each other. That we may find our rest not in our own work and our own abilities and our own continuing to struggle with the same things. No, we point each other just as Jesus does to himself, to his death, his resurrection, his meal, his body and blood that feeds us and strengthens us. And reminds us of his burden and his yoke that he gives to us. What is that? It's grace. It's forgiveness. It's life in Jesus. Who has carried our burdens and our sin and brought us life. What's it mean to be a Christian? It means following Jesus and resting in him, just as he says. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen.